So let's talk about what's going on. So we have a group G. Uh, this is the general linear group of order two. This is the set of all two by two invertible matrices with complex entries. Then we have H. This is actually a subgroup of G. It's not hard to show. It's pretty easy. Uh, this is all of the matrices in G such that C is equal to zero. So this here is actually equal to zero. Then we have another set B. This is actually a subset of H. And this is all the matrices where the diagonal entries are equal and they're non-zero. So A is equal to D and it's not zero. And B is equal to zero. And in this problem, we have to prove that the center of H, so center of H, is equal to B. Uh, the center of H is the set of all of the matrices in H that commute with every matrix inside H. Uh, and we have to show that it's equal to B. So proof. So as we go through this proof, just I guess a word of warning, when it comes to the matrix multiplication, I'm just going to do it. Uh, I'll assume you know how to do that. It's a long problem. Also, there are a lot of things that I won't write down, but I'll try to say everything, at least in words. So if you're actually proving this, you should write everything down, uh, every little detail. Okay, so we have to show that the center of H is equal to B. So we have to show two things. To show two sets are equal, we have to show that they are subsets of each other. So we'll start by showing that the center is a subset of H. So we'll take a matrix in the center and show it's in B. So suppose we have a matrix, let's see, A, B, C, D, inside the center of H. The center of H is a subset of H. So this matrix is also in H. That means that C is equal to zero, right? Because if it's in H, C is equal to zero. Okay, let's rewrite our matrix. So let me write it so then just so I don't keep writing the C. A, B, C, D is actually equal to A, B, uh-oh, running out of room, A, B, 0, D. All right, now the hard part. We have to show that our matrix is in B. So we have to show that A is equal to D and it's not equal to 0, and B is equal to 0. Well, first let's show that it's not equal to 0, that A and D are not equal to 0. So note, if you take the determinant of a, b, 0, d, you just get a, d. And because the center is a subgroup of the general linear group, it's invertible, right? All of these matrices are invertible here. So this is not 0. So if the product is not 0, then a is not 0, and d is not 0. Why? If one of them were 0, then the product is 0, and we reach a contradiction. Okay, now to show it's in the center, to continue showing it's in the center, um, let's try to think about the simplest matrix we know that's in H, right? H is all the matrices where this guy here is zero. So the identity matrix works, but the problem with the identity matrix is it's too simple, right? If you multiply the identity matrix by our matrix, you just get back our matrix. That's pretty boring. So note, let's try a different matrix. Let's take our original matrix, A, B, 0, D, and let's multiply it by, how about this one, 1, 1, 0, 1. Why this one? I don't know. It just 1 is simpler than 2. So uh, I decided to use this one. So if we multiply here, we get A, A plus B. Again, just going through the multiplication really quickly here. Z, 0, and D. There's no Z in this problem. Oh, Z, Z sub H. Multiplying it the other way, we have A, B, 0, D. Looks like we'll get A again, and this time we get B plus D. Then over here we get 0, and here we get D. So these matrices are equal, right? These two matrices are equal. Uh, why? Because our matrix is in the center, right? Our matrix is in the center of H. This is an H, so these matrices commute. Therefore, uh, we have an equality here. These are equal. That means all of the entries are equal, and the only one that seems to matter is this one, right? So that means that A plus B is equal to B plus D. So if you subtract B from both sides, you just get A equals D. And we know it's not zero, right? We set it here. 
So this is not equal to zero. So let me circle this. That's the first condition we had to satisfy in order to be inside B. The other condition is that we have to show that little b is equal to zero. So let's do that. So another simple matrix besides the identity matrix would be this one. So note, if you take one, zero, zero, how about two? You can use three or four, it doesn't matter. And A, B, zero, D. And I could have written A here, right? Because we know A is equal to D, but I didn't. It doesn't matter. Uh, we get A, right? We get A, and then here we get, uh, looks like B. Let's see. Well, one times A is A, zero times zero is zero. And then one times B is B. Yep, looks okay. And then zero times D is D. So, okay. So, uh, zero times D is zero. So, it looks, looks okay. Looks okay. Uh, and then here we get 0, and then here we get 2D. Okay, so far so good. Let's go the other way. A, B, 0, D times 1, 0, 0, 2. And this ends up being A, 2B, 0, 2D. So, again, these matrices commute because this is an H, and this is in the center of H, so this commutes with everything in H. In particular, it commutes with this guy. So we have an equality here, these are the same. And the only thing that seems to matter to us is this right here, 2B is equal to B. So 2B is equal to B. Uh, that means that B is equal to zero. You just subtract B from both sides. So we did it, right? We showed that A is equal to, D, to, equal to D, and it's not equal to zero, and that B is equal to zero. So finally, our little guy here, AB, I'll write it as zero D, is in B. So the center, is a subset of B. Now we have to show that if we have a matrix in B, it's in the center of H. So suppose we have a matrix A, B, 0, D, and B. Then, what does it mean to be in B? That means A is equal to D, and that's not equal to 0, and B is equal to zero. So let me write our matrix down another way. So A, B, zero, D, just for clarity, would be A, zero, zero, A, okay? Now to show that this is in the center, we basically have to show that it commutes with every single element of H. So we'll start by taking an arbitrary element in H. So let me just say it this way then, for all, this is kind of sloppy, but I'll do it. For all a, b, zero, d, right? That's what that's what the matrices look like in H, right? Because c is zero. And we, we will take the. Let me not call it a. Let's call it a prime, b prime, d prime. There we go. Because I already have a here, so that b, that's a recipe for disaster. So for all a prime, b prime, zero, d prime in H, we're going to take the product, right? And if it commutes, then we are set. So let's do it. So let's see, a, zero, zero, a, times a prime, b prime, zero, d prime. So this is equal to uh, a, a prime, and then a, b prime, again, just going through the multiplication quickly, zero, and looks like a, d prime. Let's go the other way, so a prime, b prime, 0, d prime, times a, 0, 0, a. This should be equal to a prime, a, uh, and then looks like b prime, a, and 0, and then last but not least, d prime, a. And then the question is, are these equal? Uh, looks OK. A, a, a prime is a prime, a. a, b prime is b prime, a. A D prime is D prime A. Why? Because complex number multiplication is commutative, right? These are complex numbers, right? Um, so that's good. So they commute. We have equality. So A B zero D is in the center of H. So B is a subset of the center. And just to really, you know, clean it up and nail it down in case you've never seen a, a proof like this before. We basically showed two things. So we showed, let me actually write down what we showed. We showed that the center 
was a subset of B, and that B was a subset of the center, whence the center of H is equal to B. So I was hoping this video would take like a minute. Uh, I was really mistaken. Uh, uh, so hopefully uh, there was no mistakes there. But I, I hope this helps someone out there who's uh, messing around with the center of a subgroup of the general linear group of order two. That's it.